have a lot to update you guys on. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, welcome to my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. I feel like I'm gonna regret the setup. Even though I'm in the shade, my eyes are already watering because they are so sensitive to the light. It is still bright and sunny out here in California. And kind of, I feel like it's like a second wave of summer that's been heating up a little bit and whatever. I have some outdoor updates to let you guys know about and then some indoor updates and then we're gonna try a new recipe today. So it's gonna be hopefully an informative, fun video. But I wanted to get out here and be outside and let you guys know some of the changes that have happened in our backyard. So I have my little list because there's just so much that has happened. So we have incorporated the baby chicks that we got weeks ago. We have now incorporated them into the big coop with the mama hens. And they're not their mother, mothers, but I'm just gonna call them mama hens. Uh, yeah, those ladies are, are very mean to the baby chicks. We actually have one rooster, so my suspicions a while ago, uh, you know, it's turning out to be true. We have a rooster, sorry about that, and we'll eventually get rid of the rooster. I have named it useless because it won't be providing us eggs and probably not meat either. I don't think we're gonna slaughter it here. Um, so I think we're gonna give it to my mother-in-law and she'll do with it as she pleases. Technically that breed is used for meat, like they are considered meat birds. And I don't know if around now, or like maybe once they've re like the first time they reach full size um, is probably when they're slaughtered is my guess. But anyways, uh, the other ones appear to be hens. So I'm happy about that. So we'll end up hopefully eventually getting about six eggs each day, which is gonna be a lot and I'll just have to be baking more or having a lot more omelets and hopefully that will help me be healthier. But I don't want this video to be really long and it's already starting off pretty long. So we've incorporated those chicks uh, with the older ones and we've had to let like the older ones free range for a time so that the baby ones, I'm gonna call them babies even though they're like probably teenagers now. You know, they are they don't really get a chance to feed throughout the day. And so we have to let the older ones like out and free range so that the other parts, like the food and the water is like freed up and they won't be attacked to get their food and water. Unfortunately, Juan noticed that some of the combs like on the top of their head, uh, like more of the mother hens, um, they have these black spots on them and that is a sign that they have some type of infection. And so we had to go buy some medicine for the birds. Um, apparently we can still eat the eggs while they have this infection. It's not like transmissible to humans. So that's at least a good thing. And hopefully, you know, we can fix the problem and, and move on from that. Some of the other like plant related changes. I've actually planted some seeds of um, alyssum, which is like white flowers we have by our flagpole. I planted those along like the bigger stretch in our side yard where I didn't really know what I was gonna plant. Like I didn't want it to feel too overwhelming and too busy over there. And since we already had some alyssum planted like in that area, but in another section, I figured that would be pretty. And if we ever get my dream of putting like a chalkboard on that wall, I think it would still look nice. So we planted some alyssum seeds there, they're sprouting. I didn't take the time to like equally space them. <laughs> so there's some sections where there's like a lot of plants and some where there's like none, but where I have planted them like last year, I'm noticing so many baby plants sprouting up. So I think it, you know, will fill in within a year and I'll probably have like then too many plants in that area. So I think we'll be okay. I ended up ripping out all of our pumpkin plants and we only got one pumpkin from the, you know, different plants that we had around our backyard. We harvested it a while ago and it was small. It didn't seem to be growing anymore. So like that's when I was just like, you know what, let's just harvest this. And it's gotten a little bit more orange in the recent days or weeks since I've harvested it. But it's, I don't know, I can't say this year's pumpkin patch was a success. 
And the last thing that we did was we actually planted a little tiny mango tree from one of our friends. Um, they had it in a pot and I guess they transferred it to another pot and they just never found like the right place or time to plant this mango tree. So they gave it to us because they knew that we wanted to plant a mango tree in honor of Taylor in our backyard. And I don't know if it is surviving the planting, unfortunately. We gave it the, you know, vitamins that we needed it to have when we planted it. And then, you know, we're making sure like that it's getting water. But I don't know if because it's been replanted so many times, like if it's, if it's gonna take, you know, I'm really hoping that the roots take and it just flourishes because our avocado tree is like really flourishing. So I'm hoping that the same thing will happen with the mango tree. If not, we can always go, you know, buy one that's maybe a little bit older and a little bit more established and plant it in the same spot. And I'm sure that one would be fine because our other trees are doing well. But anyways, I'm hoping that it takes, but if not, it's not the end of the world. It's just kind of a bummer if it dies because like we got it from our friends. So it'd be sad to say like, hey, sorry, your tree didn't make it, you know, but we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna stay outside, but talk about some of our inside changes that have occurred, you know, indoors. So the first is that we've finally, finally purchased a window shade for our kitchen window. For the longest time, ever since before we got these shutters, uh, we were given the like the paper folding kind of blinds that are temporary. And I asked for an extra one for our kitchen window because we didn't want shutters on that window, but we wanted some type of shade because the sun can like really blind you in the afternoon. So we've had that paper shade up there for like over a year and a half, I wanna say. And I was like, you know what Juan, like it's time that we do something about this. And he recently took a few days off work and that's when he just decides to like get all the household projects done. So we ordered one, we got like a blackout one, which I'm kind of regretting in some sense because I kind of liked how the paper shade like let in light, but didn't blind you. The blackout one is like definitely blind, like not um, definitely protecting you from any type of light. So I have mixed feelings about the one that we ended up getting, but it's it's working out. Uh, we could have gotten a motorized one. We went ahead and, and did a like, just pull it down one. And eventually I want to get, a, I think it's called a valance or just something to kind of cover the top part of the window because it's it's not really pretty. It's not an eyesore, but it's not pretty. So I don't know if we're gonna go old school and have like little curtains, like the short curtains hanging down and then I can have like Thanksgiving curtains and Halloween curtains and Christmas curtains and then like just the standard non-holiday curtain that is there, you know, most of the time. But I'm, I'm kind of leaning in that direction because it would be fun for the kids, I think, to have that decoration. But if not, we might just have like a board, you know, kind of covering it and just, I don't know, making it look a little bit better. To, or yesterday, no, today, it was today, uh, Juan installed pendant lights above our island. So when we got the house, we knew that like, we'd like that option of having pendant lights above the island. And, but we just didn't want to like pay for them up front because it's incorporated in like the price of your house and then your like taxes and all that stuff. And we're just like, we're not gonna, that's an expense that we can deal with later and not have to pay extra in taxes for. So we recently, because again, Juan took off and he's like in the mode to get things done around the house. We purchased the pendant lights from Amazon. We kind of went with like a cheapo one. And Juan was saying that as he was installing it, like he could tell like, oh, like the measurements are just a little bit off. They don't quite match. Like they're, they're easy to like twist and like, you know, kind of mess up. They're not as like sturdy, but for the time being, I think it'll be fine. Like they look nice and whatever. So he installed them this morning and he went and got some like Edison light bulbs to go in them, which really completed the look. The light bulbs that he initially put in were just kind of like, eh, like it kind of looks weird, but I really like how they look. I had to take down my little hanging hats that I had above the island. I had decorated for Halloween 
and I had to I moved them so like I'm gonna hang those above our dining room table now and I think it I think it looks nice that way but we have pendant lights now they dim uh you know we have the little switch in the kitchen like all the wiring was already done we just had to buy the pendant lights and I think that they were like 30 or 40 dollars each so not too expensive but it definitely kind of completes that look in the kitchen that you know we kind of dreamt of when we were designing the house Another major change that has happened inside is Jack's room has been demolished pretty much uh, or completely changed. So a while ago he climbed out of his crib for the first time and it was in the morning and in his crib there we just had like a mattress on the floor but we had two mattresses. So I was like well if I take off the top mattress that'll buy me four inches and hopefully buy me another month or two before we actually need to convert him to a toddler type bed. And then that nap time with the second mattress out, he climbed out of his crib again. And I was like, well, I guess this is the time that we need to do something about this. So that night, Juan took like everything out of his room. He took out the changing table, the dresser. He took a part, like he took the front part of the crib off and had it just like, you know, two walls, the backing and the mattress um, and like a bar, a post or whatever on the bottom to kind of keep it together. And my rocking chair, cause I was like, I still, I still nurse him. He does not want to stop nursing. And I figure like, he's still not two yet. They recommend until two years old. So it's not totally weird. But I think around two years old, if he's not done, I'm gonna, I can already tell like I'm drying up. Anyways, that's beside the point. Okay, so kept the rocking chair in there cause I still nurse him and you know, it's more comfortable for me than like sitting on the floor or something. So it was like the chair and the crib and then like some soft toys. And we're like, okay, like we, uh, we put him in for the night and I was monitoring him on like the camera that we had. Uh, Juan had to install the camera somewhere else and like he secured it to the top of the crib like with a screw so Jack couldn't take the camera off and kind of blocked behind the crib with like one of the mats that we have just so that he couldn't like, you know, access the outlet. So we're monitoring him on the camera and he finds the camera and you see his little face like you know figuring it out figuring you know playing around with the camera or whatever and then i see him grab the cord and like it's this big loop and i'm like we got to take it out we got to take the camera out and i didn't like that at all because i like monitoring jack and knowing kind of like what he's up to but i didn't want a strangled kid so it was a sacrifice i was willing to make so we took the camera out of his room and we tried to put like a locking handle, uh, like change two of the handles in our house so that we could lock him inside his room so he can't like get out and like escape and through the back door or somewhere, you know, get into trouble. But the locks that were given to us in our house, like they didn't quite work the same. Sorry about the sound, the extra sound now, but we're gonna have to deal with it. They didn't quite work the same and so we had to purchase like a round knob, but before we got that round knob for the, his door, we just used one of our little door monkeys that kind of leaves a little bit of a crack in the door that you can still lock it, but it leaves the door like cracked open a little bit. So we put the door monkey on, took the camera out and I was going in and checking on him. He's just like loving his freedom. It's like nine o'clock, I think almost 10 o'clock. He's running around, playing things, turning on the lights going crazy and uh at one point i go and i check because it was like kind of quiet and i see him tippy toe on top of the backrest of the rocking chair he had taken off one of my artwork pieces and put it on the floor he's tippy toe on the chair and he's trying to grab the thumbtacks that we hung the artwork on and i'm just like oh my gosh we got to take the chair out now like I can't get that image out of my mind it was just it was cute but I'm like okay I need to go in quick and quiet so that he doesn't get startled and like fall off the chair which is the whole point of me going in there to get him off anyways so I grab him Juan disassembles our rocking chair and now it's just a bed in a corner <laughs> and you know some soft toys and we made it through that night we've since 
had to move the crib situation to block the window because Jack was opening like the big shutter window and slamming it. So we had to block that. Um, I command stripped hooked a camera up and we like blocked the cord. So he really hasn't been able to like mess with that yet. So now we get to monitor him again and the room is like bare, but with soft toys. The walls are all like scratched up because he rides his cars on the wall. And you know, that's, it's gonna have to be repainted anyways. Like the, the area in his room where the crib was, it looks like there's a shadow of the rungs of like the bed because he had put his like, I guess dirty feet or something. Like he'd rub on the wall and like now it looks like just like dark strips in the wall. So we're gonna have to definitely like touch up his room for sure. But my little boy is growing up. If he would just stop nursing, like I know that's like a, a tender sweet experience to share with your child. But I'm kind of like, it'd be nice to just say like, you know, have a good nap and leave and not have to like still nurse. I don't know. I guess I haven't ever nursed this long. Like Aubrey was done at 15 months and Jack is going to be two in January. So it's just, I've, I've nursed him a lot longer than I, than I nursed Aubrey. Which speaking of Aubrey, uh, I am homeschooling her and because her birthday's in September, she like just misses the cutoff for kindergarten. So technically she would start TK this year. But what I've decided to do is start her with like homeschooling kindergarten curriculum. We're gonna start in November and we will be done by like June or July based on how I've lesson planned it. So like I went through all her books, I've lesson planned everything, know what we're gonna do each day. I really hope I can stick to it. I am gonna try to start like waking up early, doing a workout and really just try to get healthy, especially since we wanna have more children. If I get pregnant again, I'd like to be in a healthier spot and I'm just, I'm not losing any weight. <laughs> so I need to do something about it and I need to like really just buckle down. So I'm gonna really try to treat homeschooling as an actual job. I know that being like a stay at home mom, like I, I'm falling into the, I don't know, I get, there's might be like a little trap of like, oh, it's flexible. Oh, I can do this at my own pace or whatever. And, and because I'm not like treating it as like a job that I'm going in to get paid for, I'm a little too like relaxed on certain things. And I'm trying to like remind myself, like I could have another 40 years, 50 years on this earth do I wanna be out of shape all those years? Or should I like spend a good number of months to really kick my butt into gear and get healthy and make these sacrifices and you know, whatever and establish a good routine like where it's, it's gonna feel like a sacrifice for a few months, but like it could really pay off for the future. Same goes for her homeschooling. Like if I treat it as a job, things will hopefully fall into place a little bit more with the schedule and, and whatnot. So I'm really gonna try my best to treat this as a job. And then when I get to retire from this job, then I can sleep in, then I can, you know, kind of relax a little bit. And those will be days that I can also look forward to, but I want to get in a healthier like place now. And the last big update is this year, I will be hosting Thanksgiving for my family. And growing up, it's always been at my aunt's house, but we talked about things, we have some things in our family. So I just was like, hey, you know what? It actually might be easier on me, oddly enough, if I host Thanksgiving uh, and maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping my dream is that we can go forward and I would host from here on out. But I don't know if I'm gonna have a newborn or if I'm gonna be like due on Thanksgiving some year or you know, whatever. So right now I'm like, I'm committing to this year and we're gonna see how it goes. But I'm hosting Thanksgiving. We're gonna do kind of like a potluck style. So people, you know, I don't have to make every single dish, but I will be making, or I'm planning on making a variety of dishes. And one of them I wanted to give a try today. So even though this video is already long, we're gonna make it just a little bit longer. Maybe I'll do a quick little montage of what I'm making and do a taste test for you guys. But uh, yeah, I'm excited and nervous to host Thanksgiving. I've made Thanksgiving turkey 
one year when we were in Texas and we couldn't make it home for Thanksgiving. So I've made it once before and I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> so I'm hoping that things go well this year. And in the upcoming weeks, I am probably gonna be like trying out recipes that I might want to do for Thanksgiving, uh, just to kind of maybe give you guys ideas. And I like to like, try it first before I commit to serving it to other people same as I did for Aubrey's birthday cake like I didn't want to try that do that combo for the first time when everyone's going to be there and I don't know how it's going to turn out so that's why I wanted to make this new recipe today it's going to be like an apple blondie cheesecake bar and I'm using a different I'm using a granny smith apple even though they say a red apple in the recipe so we're going to see if if it tastes good like that if it doesn't taste good I'll try it one more time with the red apples, but I'm halving the recipe today anyways. So that will hopefully, you know, it won't be too much of a waste if it doesn't taste great. But I mean, you can't really go wrong with apples and sugar and Granny Smith usually go well with sweet because you have that tart component. So I just hope that it turns out okay, but that's what we're gonna be doing today. So thank you for listening to all my updates. Let's go ahead and get in the kitchen and start putting these brownie blondie cheesecake bars together. So we are gonna start off by browning some butter. So we're just cooking this on like medium heat on a stove top. It's gonna start to bubble and get like a white topping. And then that will kind of go away and you just wanna keep stirring and you kind of see like the nice brown little bits in the bottom of the pan. Once this happens, we are gonna turn off the heat and pour this over some brown sugar and just kind of mix this together. And you want this to kind of sit on the side and cool down before adding your eggs. So I'm gonna let this cool and I'm gonna work on the dry ingredients. And a lot of the ingredients here are just kind of basic ingredients, flour, I think it was baking powder, cinnamon, salt. Aubrey really wanted to help out, so I let her carefully stir the dry ingredients. And then we added in the eggs. And because I was halving the recipe, this recipe called for three eggs. So I had to measure out um, like the weight of an egg and, you know, get the appropriate amount based on the half of three eggs. So anyways, moving on. Once our wet ingredients have been mixed, we are going to add in the dry ingredients. And Aubrey again wanted to help. Help. So it was actually really nice to just mix and keep the mixer on and have my little tiny scoops of dry ingredients added in as we were going. Once we get this kind of nicely incorporated, we will be adding up some of the Granny Smith apples that I peeled and chopped up into little cubes. Like I said before, we were supposed to apparently use a red apple, but honestly, I think the Granny Smith tasted just fine. And in some ways, I think Granny Smith is recommended for desserts anyways because of the tartness. That way you're not like too sweet over Load. And in this case, after trying it, I think if I had used a sweeter apple, it would have been like way too sweet because this was a very sweet treat. So we are going to go ahead and bake these blondies. And I kind of did things out of order. I made this cheesecake topping while this was in the oven, which I really should have just like waited for the blondie bars um, to kind of cool down. But anyways, we are gonna be mixing up some cream cheese, some vanilla, which I like way over poured, some sugar, I believe some cinnamon. And while that is all mixing up, we are gonna be measuring out our heavy whipping cream and whipping that to stiff peaks. This will help kind of create, like have that airy texture Texture in the cream cheese mixture for the cheesecake part. So we're mixing this all together, folding in that heavy whipping cream, and it's going to give us this beautiful uh, cheesecake topping, which once our blondie bars have cooled down, we put this on top, and then we will be putting this in the fridge for at least four hours to chill. It's probably better if you do it overnight, but I had company over and I wanted them to try this out. So I was kind of rushed afterwards. And then what I'm doing here is I am browning more butter and we are gonna be making a glaze. So it's like a maple cinnamon, 
glaze that goes on top of the bars as if this didn't have enough sweetness already. So we're adding in some maple syrup, some powdered sugar, then we're going to be adding in some cinnamon and vanilla, which I again over pour unfortunately, but in some sense it doesn't really matter. And we're kind of just cooking this down, mixing it all up, and I again made this a little too early and it kind of got hardened, but I reheated it when I wanted to drizzle it on the bars, and honestly it worked out fine, but the recipe that I was following said to make it just before you serve, which keeping that in mind for making it for Thanksgiving, it seems a little unrealistic to make things like right before serving it on Thanksgiving. But anyways, we really enjoyed this treat. Uh, everyone that I gave it to really loved it, and it was very sweet, very delicious. Ultimately, I think all of this could be prepped the day before Thanksgiving to make life a little bit easier the day of. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this extremely long and random update video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. I would love to have you stick around, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.